I'm going to do a quick video here, just an interesting study that uh, the Lord kind of inspired me to do here. Um, just to get to the Jewish people, because I've heard that uh, there are many Jewish people that believe that the New Testament is against the Jewish, the nation of Israel, they're the Jewish people. Um, and that's true in one sense. The Vatican Bibles are against the Jewish people. I'm going to show you that, actually how a lot of the new versions are changed to be anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. And you say, well, then the New Testament's against the Jews. No, actually, the New Testament behind the King James Bible is pro-Jewish, but the ones behind the new ver versions that come from the Vatican, those are anti-Semitic. And I'm going to show you the proof. You see, if you are not aware of this, there are two different New Testaments, okay, and represented by two different Greek families of manuscripts, if you will. Okay, you have your received text over here. Actually, I should have this in my right hand, excuse me. Received text over here, and the Nessel Aland uh, United Bible Society. There's a couple other, you know, ones Westcott and Hort. You know, if you go back far enough, this is another one. Okay, this one is based upon a very small minority of extant Greek manuscripts. In other words, manuscripts that are out there in the world. The two biggest ones, of course, are Sinaiticus Codex B or Codex Aleph, and Codex B, also known as the Vaticanus. Okay, you can say Sinaiticus or Sin, Sinaiticus or, you know, there's a lot of different ways to say it. Or Vaticanus, you know, people come up with all these kind of stupid ways to say it. But the, the point is, these manuscripts come from Egypt. These ones come from Antioch in Syria, right? The vast majority, over 99% of all manuscripts out there, extant Greek manuscripts that we have copies of, line up with this text over here. Less than 1% line up with the Vatican text over here. You say, well, I don't really believe that it's from the Vatican. Okay, well, let me show you this. I have a Nestle Alon 27th edition. There you can see edition 27. And I will show you inside the introduction here. Page 45. You can see the introduction. Get into all this stuff. The text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by the or by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies. It has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. Okay, and you say, well, this is the 27th edition. What about the 28th edition? Well, the 28th edition is still put out by the same people. Some of the people have died, of course, but uh, let me show you here in the beginning. Um, there you have. This thing here, Carlo Maria Martini is a Jesuit cardinal. I believe he's dead now and in hell. But the point is, Vatican, the Vatican, this is their text. Every Catholic Bible is based upon this text. Not one Catholic Bible has ever been based upon this, this Textus Receptus. This is a Receptus, let me show you here real quickly. This is a Receptus. Uh, the Holy Bible, Holy Scriptures in the original languages. There you have the Hebrew, followed by the Greek. Hebrew, Greek. And put out by the Trinitarian Bible Society. Okay, This is a completely different Bible than this one. They're not the same. It's not that the King James Bible is just an old Bible with old archaic English, and then now the newer Bibles are just updating it. No, they're coming from the Vatican. All right, And let me show you another little proof. If you still don't believe, you say, well, you know, there's still Protestant Bibles coming out of this text over here. Uh, again, Protestantism, most of that stuff ties right back to the Vatican. These guys were not trying to say Catholicism is wicked. They were trying to reform Catholicism. That's why all the daughters, the Protestant daughters of Mystery Babylon, all carry the baggage of Mystery Babylon over into their systems. Baby sprinkling the authority of the priests, the altar, the holy temples, the vestments, all the Catholic baggage, which has no basis in the King James Bible. And you say, well, what the King James Bible was, many Protestants, you know, were, the Protestants were the ones that translated it. Oh, well, then why is it that the King James Bible condemns uh, those things? Okay, if there was some kind of a bias, you know, uh, Protestant bias or something like this. No, the King James Bible, the translators there, the Puritans and the Episcopalians, basically the Church of England, scholars that translated the King James Bible, translated it true to 
those Greek manuscripts that they had and other older translations too, which predated a lot of the Greek manuscripts that they had. So there is no Catholic bias with this King James Bible. Kind of interesting too that God would wait till there was a man, a king on the throne of England that had a Jewish name of James. Very interesting. But here we have the Second Vatican Council. Let me show you here. Second Vatican Council. Revised translation in inclusive language. That's important. But uh, Second Vatican Council, page 112. Check this out. But since the Word of God must be readily available at all times, the Church, with motherly concern, sees to it that suitable and correct translations are made into various languages, especially from the original texts of the sacred books, like that one. If when the opportunity presents itself and the authorities of the Church agree, Cardinal Carlo Maria Martini, these translations are made with, jointly with churches separated from us, the Protestants, they can then be used by all Christians. So don't tell me you get some smarty pants out there like James White or some of these other lying devils and they'll say, oh, we're not Catholics. We're, we're against Catholicism. We would definitely not agree with Catholicism. We're Reformed or you know some kind of a thing like this. They're Catholic. They're daughters of the whore. That's what Protestantism is. It's a daughter of the whore. All right? And they're saying, we're going to make translations with these churches that are separated from us, the Protestants, and they do. Right there's the proof. Anybody that's promoting this text right here is they're put, they're bringing out Vatican versions. Now, if you know anything about the Vatican, the Vatican one of their primary doctrines is what's called replacement theology. Many of their greatest theologians, Augustine, um, of course Martin Luther was a Catholic theologian. And he just reformed Catholicism and made a little side thing that's now joined back in with Catholicism, uh, the Lutheran cult system. And of course, you know, they dedicated a square over in Rome now to Martin Luther, Martin Lutero, you know. I have a video on that, so don't put it in the comments, oh no, he's anti-Catholic. No, no, back in the 1990s, the Lutherans signed an agreement to rejoin the Vatican. So if you're a Lutheran, you're a Catholic now. Um, it's just the way it is. But these new versions, if they have a tie into the Catholic Church, and I just showed you, showed you that they do, these are all based on the Nestle's text, the Nestle's type text, whether whatever edition and things, but these are all based on this. Or you have the one like this one here, which is based loosely on it, the Message Bible, but it's also based on the lunatic ravings of Eugene Peterson. The guy was a nut. Okay, uh, I don't know if he's still alive or not. If he is, you know, he's a lunatic. Tell him I said so. But um, these are not updated editions of the King James Bible. Okay, that's very important to understand. The King James Bible is very much pro-Israel. All right. Yes, it talks about how the Jews killed Jesus Christ. They did. They put him to death. And again, not all Jews, because there were thousands of, upon thousands of Jews that did get saved in the book of Acts. So it's not hating the Jewish people. But the Jewish hierarchy, the rabbis of that time, did put Jesus to death. And they were going out and they were persecuting Christians. That's a historical fact. It's not anti-Semitic. That's very important to understand. And you read through the New Testament, all through the books that Paul wrote, it's very much pro-Israel. The, to the Jew first. And to the Greek, you know, also to the Greek afterwards. I mean, the, the gospel came to the Jews first. You read the book of Acts. They're going and they're going to the synagogues and they're preaching and they're going and they're still keeping all the Jewish holy days and things. I mean, it's a Jewish book. Jesus said, you know, that salvation is of the Jews. Paul talked about the advantage that, that, that the uh, Jews have in Romans chapter 3. So, it's a Jewish book, definitely. But the Catholics, they believe in this thing of replacement theology, that the church has replaced the nation of Israel. And now the church is the center of God's attention. That's why... Catholics believe that they're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Again, Israel is pushed out of the way. Matthew 24 is not for Israel anymore. It's now for the church and for the purification of Christ's church. Christ's church doesn't appear anywhere in Matthew 24, especially Catholicism, which is not Christ's church. Well, the Antichrist church, actually. But I'm going to show you some key scriptures here. Very interesting. 
the book of Romans is very, very much talking about this thing of God's relationship with the nation of Israel. So let's look at a couple of these. Uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 5. I'm going to show you some interesting things here. And again, you know, let me just explain this. If replacement theology is true, then that proves that God is a liar because he broke his covenant with Abraham's seed through Isaac. So God promises them physical land with a king ruling over them for the thousand-year millennial kingdom. Now, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you know that that's Jesus Christ that's going to come back and he's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, you get that? Going to rule and reign for a thousand years physically on the earth, just like the Bible teaches in Revelation chapter 20. It's right there. Premillennialism is the only way that you can believe if you are a Bible-believing Christian. But ironically, a lot of these people like James White and these other satanic heretics like that, that are basically Vatican agents, um, these guys do not believe in premillennialism. They don't believe in that. It's the church that will rule. Kind of like Catholicism. Gee, I wonder where they would have gotten that idea from. And I just showed you, this is the text that he promotes, so don't put it in the comments, he's not a friend of the Vatican, he debates the Vatican, you know, he'll debate Roman Catholics. That's all a game. I mean, give me a break. Look at the Jesuit uh, extreme oath of induction. They'll talk about that even as Jesuits, you even can speak against the mother church occasionally to, you know, make it look like you're, you know, a Protestant or something like this. It's all a game that they're playing. I mean... If he was, if, if James White or these Bible correctors like that were really truly Bible believing Christians, they would promote this text. They wouldn't mess around with a less than 1% of the Greek, extant Greek manuscript, you know, basis here that comes from the Vatican, made under the supervision of the Vatican. I just showed you the quote right in the introduction. They wouldn't mess around with translations which are being made jointly with the Catholic Church. I'm going to show you one of them, which I have a video about, where they actually show the list of translators, and there are Jesuits right in the list of translators, as well as Catholic priests of a Protestant Bible. But let's show you here. Romans chapter 9, verse 5. First, we're going to look here at the King James Bible. Whose are the fathers, talking about the promises, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came who is over all God, blessed forever. Amen. Christ came. He's already come and gone. He died on the cross, and he'll be coming back. The second coming. All right? Christ came. Very important. Now let's look at the, the darling of the modern versionists, the Alexandrian cult. Their uh, English Standard Version. This is the one that they'll point you to now. You know, it used to be the New American Standard, and then it was, you know, that was the most accurate and everything. Which, again, that's a lie. They'll tell you well, the New American Standard is the most accurate to the oldest and best Greek, you know, manuscripts. Uh, well, they're referring to Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, which is funny because those books actually have apocryphal books as part of the inspired text. So if the New American Standard Version is the most accurate, where are the apocryphal books? See, they lie. They lie. But, the, you know, the New American Standard, and they, they kind of drop that. And then they, oh, the English Standard Version, you know, oh, the, the, the New King James. And then, and then the, the, you know, getting your money. Here we have the ESV, Romans chapter 9, verse 5. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. Wait a second. Where's Christ came? From their race, here, according to the flesh, is the Christ. You mean he didn't come yet? You see, the Jews, because they're being deceived by their rabbis, which many of the rabbis are in league with the Vatican, they're, you know, traitors. And I'm going to show you some of the occult connections between Catholicism and modern-day uh, Judaism. Modern-day Judaism is not the Judaism of the Old Testament. It's not, you know, we base it on the Torah. Modern Judaism practices are not based on the Torah. Okay, where's the system of sacrifices? Where's the keeping of the Mosaic Law? It's not there. They add the Talmud. They add a bunch of other junk that is not based upon the King, or the, well, the King James Bible, but also not based upon the Old Testament. So, but you see, they change the text. 
your King James Bible says Christ came. This one here says, to them belong the patriarchs from, from their race according to the flesh is the Christ. Christ didn't come. It's just according to their race is the Christ. And, you know, many times, again, another little thing I need to mention is the fact that they'll say, but, but you know, older, better manuscripts, yeah, blah, blah. a lot of times they're putting in readings that don't even appear in here. They put in their own readings. How about another one of the great conservative, you know, new versions? We have the NIV, the newest one, the 2011. At least the newest last time I checked. Maybe they've come out with another one since then. I don't know. You know, it, it depends on the sales of it. And uh, I'm not joking about that either. It's owned by HarperCollins Publishing, which is owned by Rupert Murdoch, who owns Fox Television. And they actually talked on the website, the HarperCollins website, or the Zondervan, excuse me, because Zondervan is owned by HarperCollins. They actually talked about different demographics, different groups we can market Bibles to. So yes, it is absolutely about money. Romans 9, verse 5. Here we have Romans 9 and verse 5. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all forever praised. Again, human ancestry of the Messiah. Uh, the word Messiah is not in the Greek text. You say, I don't believe you. I, I don't believe that. That's ridiculous. This is nonsense. Okay. How about, how about we check it? I don't do a lot of uh, Greeky stuff, you know. I don't really waste a whole lot of time with Greek, but uh, just for the sake of argument here, oh, there's John. Stuff's hard to figure out, you know. It's like reading Greek. Little joke there. Uh, Romans 9. Okay, here we have Romans 9, verse 5. There's the word for Christ. Oh, that's not the word for Messiah. So uh, the NIV comes out, you know, uh, most trusted, most... So they say it on here. Just trying to see. A lot of times they'll come out and they'll say, the most trusted, most, you know, whatever Bible out there and everything. The NIV, conservative scholarship. <laughs> They're lying to you. Yeah, the word Messiah is not in the, in the text. It's not in the Greek. You know, they're Greek. Why are they putting in Messiah there? Hmm. And, you know, they'll, they'll change words in Matthew 24 where Jesus talks about, you know, let me see, let me just check it and make sure. I know that they did it in one of their editions. I don't know, because they, they came out and made a bunch of changes with the Today's New International Version, and then they, then they like, kind of, you know, backslid a little bit, you know, with their Satanism because they got caught. Bible believers came out and exposed them. Yep. Uh, Matthew 24. Here you see Matthew chapter 24. Look at this. Many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. The word's not Messiah. Again, not Messiah in the Greek. They're Greek text. Why are they saying Messiah? Well, think about it. King James Bible says, I am Christ. People will come deceiving many saying, I am Christ. Every Catholic priest proclaims to be Christ. According to official Catholic dogma. They don't claim to be the Messiah. So they're coming up for the Catholic priests in the NIV. How about that? But again, you see there in, in Romans 9, 5, they're not saying Christ came. The human ancestry of the Messiah. And of course, you know, they changed Luke 2, 33 to say instead of, you know, Joseph and his mother marvel at those things like the King James Bible says, they'll say the child's father and mother. So Jesus has Joseph as his actual father, birth father. They'll change it. And, you know, I mean, King James Bible believers have known about this stuff for a long time. But let's see what else we have here. Uh, we'll get a little bit of comic relief here. Um, the messy message. This thing is so, so hard to try and find verses because there are no verse numbers in the thing. I think some of the additions, they, they try to do that. 
Um, yeah, here we have Romans 9. Uh, Say nothing of being the race that produced the Messiah, the Christ, who is God over everything always. Oh, yes. <laughs> so they put in both, the Messiah, the Christ. You know, Well, not they, Eugene Peterson, the demented wingnut that he is. You know, uh, I mean, what a weirdo. So they put in both, you know. He puts in both. Excuse me. Now this one, next one I'll show you here. This is the uh, Common English Bible, New Testament. I did a video on this thing. This is the one that they openly have in the translation team. They're openly showing Jesuits, graduates of Loyola University. The guy's a Jesuit. Here's a Catholic priest. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just open. Pentecostals, Baptists, Lutherans, you know, Church of Christ. I mean, all these different scholars, you know, working together to produce this satanic book. And they, they change so many things. It's it's This thing is corrupt beyond belief. I know that they were going to come out with the whole thing. It's been years ago. I don't even know. I, I haven't kept up with it. Um, Romans 9, verse 5, the Jewish ancestors are theirs, and the Messiah descended from those ancestors. He is the one who rules over all things, who is God, and who is blessed forever. Amen. Again, there's no Greek support for this. I showed you from the Nestle's text. There's nothing there. I mean, come on. And he's, he was like, oh, it's the same thing. Messiah and Christ are the same thing. Uh, well, they mean the same thing, essentially. But the fact is, if you're going to be true to your own Greek text, you have to say Christ. But you see, you have the thing of derivative copyright law, where you, if you want to get your own copyright, you have to change the text substantially so that you can make enough money or, you know, get rich off of it. So you can market it, get a good copy. Uh, copyright, excuse me. So, again, though, it's not that Christ came. It's just he's, you know, kind of mystically going to show up at some point in time. Like the uh, Vatican-inspired uh, rabbis are teaching the Jewish people. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not messing around there. Again, you know, Rabbi Arthur Schneier, I think his name is from New York, you know, became a Catholic knight just a few months ago. So don't, don't you know, I'm not anti-Semitic. I am very much pro-Israel. I'm very much for the Jewish people, as any real Bible-believing Christian is. And they're joining with the Vatican. You know, probably promoting some of this stuff, too. Uh, let's see here. Romans chapter 9. I'll show you this what, what this one is here in just a minute. Um, Romans chapter 9, verse 5. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah. Comes the Messiah. They changed came, Christ, to comes the Messiah. He hasn't come yet. I mean, look at it. Look at this. Look at this. And you want me to believe that this is somehow a good translation, whatever else you say. Which one is it? Are you ready? I'm not going to do a drum roll, but, you know, here we go. You ready? The New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Youth Bible. Pray it, study it, live it. <laughs> oh, boy. A Protestant Bible version that's made for Catholic youth? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it says that uh, the Messiah comes. It's not that Christ came, like your King James Bible says. It's that he's coming. But how about we throw another one into the mix? Another Vatican version. The complete Jewish Bible. You see? You say, well, these, you know, okay, this stuff here, they're targeting Protestants, they're targeting, targeting Catholics and whatever else. They, they aren't targeting Jews and things. Oh, yeah, they are. You see, you're another market demographic. You're another uh, untapped resource, financial resource that they're coming after. Let me show you this one, the complete Jewish Bible. Go here to the New Testament. Romans chapter 9.
Okay, here we have, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see better. Romans 9 and verse 5. The patriarchs are theirs, and from them, as far as the physical descent uh, is concerned, came the Messiah, who is over all, praised be Adonai forever. Amen. You say, oh, then it says basically the, the same thing there as the King James Bible. Well, you know, again, Messiah is not the word, it's Christ. Right? And it says the same thing in the Receptus too, by the way. So again, they're changing the text. But, you know, at least it says that he came, not that he's coming, you know, comes the Messiah like the Catholic Youth Bible says. But just to show you here, I'll just look up something here real quick, see if they say it. You say, well, then this, this must be a faithful, faithful translation of the received text. The vast majority of manuscripts, the, those that date back to Antioch, or go back to Antioch, uh, you know, this must be a faithful translation. They must not rely on the Vatican text, Vaticanus Sinaiticus, right? Let's look about this. Acts chapter 8, verse 37. Uh-oh, 37 is gone, and all you get is a little asterisk there, a little star. Isn't that nice? You know, and hey, it's a six-pointed star, too. So you get a hexagram. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> and you go down here, and it says... Some manuscripts include verse 37. Oh, isn't that nice? You see what they did? They combine receptus type of readings like we just read in Romans 9, 5, came Christ. You know, they have came the Messiah. They, were, they put some correct with false Vatican-inspired type of stuff. The Vatican removes Acts 8, 37. The, excuse me, the Vaticanus and, you know, things. They remove that. From this text, verse 37, oh, it's not in there. It shouldn't be in there. We don't have the correct manuscript support for it. And you'll see many, many places in here where they'll read this thing, this complete Jewish Bible, reads just like the new versions that come from the Vatican. So they are, they are out for you. They're trying to deceive you. Next, let's go to Rom Romans 11, verse 8. Romans 11, verse 8. 8, King James Bible, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. You know, when you talk to somebody about the truth, and if you're Jewish and you're saved, you obviously know this with your family members, and if you're a Jew and you're, you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior yet, He's not your Messiah, you haven't recognized Him as that, um, you're asleep. All right, uh, the, the words that Jesus Christ prophesied have come to pass in Matthew chapter 24 and are coming to pass. Uh, and there's a lot of other proofs about Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, what about the millions and millions of people that have had their lives changed by belief in Jesus Christ? I mean, there's, there's a lot. But the point is, the King James Bible, again, is very gentle with the Jewish people. It says they're sleeping. They have a spirit of slumber. Let's see what the... Uh, Vatican versions say. Let's start out with the uh, complete Jewish Bible. Complete Catholic, I mean, uh, you know, yeah. Complete Vatican deception. Romans 11, verse 8. See it here, Romans 11. Chapter 11, uh, okay, it starts down there just as the Tanakh says. God has given them a spirit of dullness. <laughs> okay, so you got a spirit of dullness. Dullness, you're very dull. <laughs> uh, you say, well, that doesn't seem very nice. You know, it's one thing to say I, that people are asleep. It's another thing to say that they're dull. How about the uh, English Standard Version? Romans 11 and verse, uh, what are we at here? Verse 8. God gave them a spirit of stupor from the English Standard Version. Stupor. You know, kind of like they're stupid. 
kind of like clumsy or not clumsy so much but you know just kind of fumbling around kind of like idiots essentially not very nice see it's not written by Bible believers this ESV it's written by Vatican people remember remember this text made under the supervision of the Vatican Vatican II if we can make translations with churches separated from us the Catholics are the ones that are putting this stuff together all right here we have the common English Bible Romans 11 verse 8 verse 6 uh, is there, and God gave them a dull spirit, very much like the uh, complete Jewish Bible. You have a dull spirit, apparently. We'll go next to the Nutty Idiot version, also known as the NIV. Because Catholics are idiots. I mean, they worship uh, Mary. When the Bible does not say anything about that, she's there in the book of Acts, in the early part of the book of Acts. Nobody worships her. The uh, Catholic dogma is that she was ascended, you know, she ascended up to heaven she, because she was sinless. She couldn't die. You had the Immaculate Conception, called the Immaculate Deception, you know, uh, which was canon, made official doctrine in the 1800s. And then in the 1950s, they had the Assumption of Mary. Uh, which is if she was born sinless, she couldn't have died because the wages of sin is death. So if she was sinless, she couldn't have died. So she had to be assumed up to heaven. Uh, and yet, if this miraculous event happened, nobody even bothered to record it in the book of Acts. And she's there with the early Christians in Acts chapter 1. Nobody worships her. And then you have the whole Catholic thing too of turning bread and wine into the physical body and blood of Jesus Christ. Catholicism is ancient mystery Babylonian paganism with uh, Christian names. That's all it is. Romans chapter 9, or excuse me, Romans chapter 11, verse 8. And the nutty, nutty idolatry, Nimrod idolatry Vaticanism or something like that. Maybe we'll call it, or hey, here's a good one. Nimrod, Nimrod idolatry vampirism. There you go, NIV. I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to use that. Uh, Romans 11, verse 8 in the NIV, God gave them a spirit of stupor. So both NIV and ESV both say that the Jews have a spirit of stupor. Loving, nice thing for the God's chosen people that God has plans for yet in the future. That's a nice thing for them to say. I'll just chuck that box over that way. Don't need that right now. Catholic Youth Bible, the NRSV. You know, it's so funny because a lot of the conservative <laughs> people like James White, they'll say, you know, the, and people like of his uh, grouped, group that he's in, and they'll say that the New Revised Standard Version is the, is the Bible of the liberal. That's kind of the modern church Christian Bible. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's the same junk coming from the Vatican. Give me a break. Romans 11 and verse 8, God gave them a sluggish spirit. It's not the same thing as slumber. If somebody's asleep, it's not quite the same thing as if you're sluggish. Sluggish kind of implies that you're lazy, you know. But this is a good one here. This, this, this one's good. You ready for this one? Let's hear from the great scholar uh, Eugene Peterson. <laughs> this thing exists for, for uh, entertainment this guy is, is so possessed with, with devils. It just, it's insane. Um, again, you got to, you know, you got to kind of go through the thing because there's no verse numbers. There's no verse markings, chapter markings. But by the way, I just want to show something here. Eugene Peterson, the message, and look at what this was put out by the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. So this is one that they were actually, I bought this at a used bookstore. This is the kind of junk that they'd hand out at his uh, crusades. You know, it's a good guy. You know, Billy Graham meeting with the Pope, good personal friends with the Pope and everything else. You know, receives the yoke of Rome, multiple awards from the Catholics and things. He's a wolf. Don't fall for him either. 
Romans chapter 11 and uh, verse 8. You got to see this one. Fed up with their quarrelsome, self centered ways, God blurred their eyes and dulled their ears. See, that's the eyes, you know, closed and, and everything there. But look what he says. Instead of spirit of slumber, we have shut them in on themselves in a hall of mirrors. <laughs> and, they're t and they're there to this day. <laughs> okay. So if you're Jewish, Orthodox, or ultra Orthodox, or whatever, you know. You're over there, you're in a hall of mirrors. <laughs> and you're still shut in until this day. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I you know, you guess you just the way you'd have to interpret this is, you know, you just read it and you go, it doesn't make sense. And you know, you just kind of inject special stuff into your veins or smoke the right kind of thing, and then you go, Oh yeah, I get it now. I mean <laughs> people take this stuff seriously too. I mean, there are people in these modern church, you know, Babel buildings, I should hate to even call them churches, people in these modern satanic pagan Babel buildings, and they, they carry this like it's God's word. Rick Warren quotes this message thing all the time. I mean, it, yeah. But let's go on here. Romans chapter 11, verse 27. Which one should we start out with? Uh, let's start out with the funny funny bunny here. Romans 11, 27. Uh, actually, let's, I'll leave that one. It's so hard to find verses in that stupid thing. Romans 11, verse 27. Okay, actually, we, no, we've got to start out in the King James Bible to get the real reading. Uh, Romans 11, 27 says here, For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. God has a covenant. Is my covenant. Okay? There is a covenant with the children of Israel. Romans 11, 27 in the New Reviled Substandard Perversion. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. See again, the spirit of confusion. They'll put in some things that are right and then they mix in a lot of error with it. You know, pretty bad. But uh, stick this one over here like that. I don't even know if I should bother trying to find this. Um, in this stupid message thing. Uh, so difficult trying to find anything in this thing. Okay, here it is. This is my commitment to my people. Removal of their sins. It's not a commitment, it's a covenant. Give me a break. What do you expect from the message, you know? Surprised you didn't say this is my uh, iPhone 6 to them or something like this, you know? Got to keep it updated, you know, modern contemporary English. Uh, Romans 11.27 in the, contemp or the uh, Common English Bible. There you see it. Romans 11, 27, this is my covenant with them, okay? Again, they get the thing of, it is my covenant. Very important. Here we have the uh, complete Jewish Bible, Romans 11. Romans 11, 27. Check this one out. This will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Wait a second. It's not is my covenant. It's will be my covenant. Huh. So it's like the Messiah is coming and there will be a covenant. Interesting because Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 says that, he, that the Antichrist basically is who it's talking about in context. He confirms the covenant. You see how these Vatican versions are actually setting the Jewish people up to believe that the Antichrist is going to be their Messiah. Whether he's Jew or Gentile, you know, I've talked about that in my other study. They're being set up. Set up for a very hard fall. Isn't that incredible? Will be my covenant. 
not is my covenant. Here we have the NIV, and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. And you say, well, you know, but see, I don't understand because some of them get it right, some of them don't. Well, again, number one, you have derivative, derivative copyright law where they are trying to change uh, their derivative work. It's derived from another thing, you know, in other words, over, you know, 200 of these new versions, basically, since uh, the late 1800s with Westcott and Hort, you know, perversion that came out, the revised version and the American Standard Version in America. And so they've been having to change and tweak the Bible little bits and little bits so that they can each get their own copyright. So you have that. But you also have another more dastardly, more deceitful thing with this whole thing, and that is you get these preachers and they'll write a book or they'll preach a sermon and they'll say, now, the NIV says in this passage, I like the way it renders it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, let's go next in your Bibles to such and such. Now, the, the message says it this way. I like it the way it says. You can prepare your sermon with all this different stuff. It's no longer just, thus saith the Lord. It's Hey, the Bible says it, I believe it, that's it. That settles it. Boom, done. No, no. It's multiple different conflicting authorities. You read a book by Pat Robertson or any of these modern day, you know, Christians. Pat Robertson, big oil man, big diamond mine man, and big money. You know, it's crook. But you read books by these guys, they'll be quoting, they'll quote six, seven, eight different Bible versions. So see, if you're into replacement theology as a modern uh, preacher... You just go through and you say, well, this one says, is my covenant. That one says, is my covenant. Oh, that one says, will be my covenant. I like that one. See, you can bend the scriptures with using all your Alexandrian Vatican versions to make your argument. You don't have to just be stuck with one Bible. And these satanic heretics that support this Vatican thing, the agents of the Vatican, they'll all come out and they'll say, oh, it's just so horrible. King James onlyism, it's a cult. Oh, how is a cult, a, a group that has one authority, one Bible, that we're all accountable to? That's not cultic, okay? Cultic is where you have men telling you what to do and controlling the laity. That's a cult, a definition of a cult. Every man is free. If you're a King James Bible believer... If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. James chapter 1. See? We all have the same authority, but each of us is a is royal priesthood. We all have the priesthood of the believer. That doesn't exist over here. You have to have a scholar tell you what to believe. So, again, NIV there has the right reading. Is my covenant. How about the uh, English Standard Version? Uh, Romans 11, verse 27. This will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Ah, will be my covenant. It's a covenant that's coming. Not one that is here already. And that's the fulfillment, by the way, too. If you say, well, yeah, but, you know, when I shall take away their sins, you know, so it is kind of futuristic. No, 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 no. What's being said there in the King James Bible, this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. What's being said there is the full completion of the covenant that God made with Abraham is the nation of Israel accepting Jesus Christ as their Messiah, and he rules and reigns for the thousand years. They get the land that's promised, the Abrahamic covenant. It's physical real estate. There's nothing spiritual about it. There's no spiritual thing there. You know, it's God says, hey, Abraham, here's land that I'm going to give you and your descendants someday. And there's going to be a king that rules over them. Essentially, as time progresses, they see that. And it's Jesus Christ that's going to rule over them for the thousand year kingdom. So the covenant is completed. The agreement that God made there with Abraham is finished at that point in time. God keeps his word. But these new versions say, this will be the covenant. And the Antichrist in Daniel 9, 27 comes along and he confirms a covenant. You better think about this stuff. Romans chapter 11, verse 28. Let's look at the next verse here. Go to the King James Bible, the right one. First, 
here. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Talking about the Jews. But as, con as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies. If you're a Jew and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ and you reject Jesus Christ, you are an enemy according to the gospel. You're not an enemy of God. How could you be an enemy of God? Because he has a covenant with you. You're, as touching the election, you are beloved for the Father's sakes. If you are a true descendant of Abraham through Isaac, you are beloved. You don't, you're an enemy in terms of me and you. We don't believe the same gospel. You've rejected Jesus Christ. You don't believe in Jesus Christ. So we're enemies in that sense. But you're not God's enemy. Unless you use a new version. Let me show you what I mean. Romans chapter 11. Again, the ESV. Romans 11. We'll go down through here. Verse 28. As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. Uh, how about that? You know? So you have, they are enemies of God. Isn't that incredible? You say, well, I was, I was taught as a Jew growing up that the, that the New Testament is against the Jewish people. Well, if you use one that comes from the Vatican, yeah. Yeah. Because the Vatican hates the Jews. The Catholics, they hate Jews. That's what the Crusades were all about. That's what uh, Nazism was all about. The Nazis were Catholics. They signed a concordant with Pope Pius, I think the 12th. Franz von Papen, look it up. The, all the big hierarchy of, of Nazism, Hitler and, and uh, Mussolini also, he was a Catholic, you know, he was in Italy, of course, but uh, you had uh, um, some of these guys, uh, Goebbels and... and you know, uh, Himmler and all these, they were all Catholics. It's disgusting. Here we have the uh, complete Jewish Bible, Romans eleven twenty eight. With respect to the good news, they are hated for your sake, but with respect to being chosen, they are loved for the patriarch's sake. So it does not say that they are enemies of God. You know, although it does say that they are hated. I wonder who is the one that hates him. Um, Romans eleven twenty eight in the NIV. But as far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies for your sake. Okay, so reads very similar to the King James Bible. Again, though, why the confusion? Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. See? God is not the author of confusion, brethren. The Common English Bible Verse 28, according to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Okay? Again, the Common English Bible, made by Jesuits and Protestants, uh, gets it right. At least that part of it. Uh, okay. The messy message. From your point of view, as you hear and embrace the good news of the message, it looks like the Jews are God's enemies hmm but looked at from the long-range perspective of god's overall purpose they remain god's oldest friends <laughs> okay uh it looks like the jews are god's enemies i wonder what spirit it was that inspired the message i wonder i just wonder i mean there's people out there that are a lot smarter than me they can probably figure it out how about the uh, NRSV? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God. There you go. Down there, for your sake. Okay? They are enemies of God. The Catholic Youth Bible. Classy. You know? But finally, let's look at one more little uh, scripture comparison here. Uh, another very important verse in your King James Bible, again showing the King James Bible is very much pro-Israel for the Jewish people. This is another one of the classic ones. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, you know, I wonder who that's written to. <laughs> Hebrews, Jewish people. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 16, for some when they had heard did provoke, talking about the Jews that came out of Egypt. 
howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So in other words, when the Jews came out, you read the book of Exodus, not all of those Jews were wicked, howbeit not all that came out uh, of Egypt by Moses. So not all the Jews were wicked. Again, pro-Israel. You see? Let's look at the new versions. Let's start out here with the uh, complete Jewish Bible. Hebrews 3 and verse 16. There you see Hebrews 3, 16. Who were, who were the people who, after they heard, quarreled so bitter, bitterly, all those whom Moshe brought out of Egypt? What? King James Bible says, not all. This says, all those whom there were there for Moses brought out of Egypt. So a Bible written for Messianic Jews, um, a new version for Jews, and yet they attack the Jews. Yeah. Let's check the uh, Catholic Youth Bible. Or wait, did I read that wrong? Maybe, maybe it should be a Nazi Youth Bible. I shouldn't have said that. That was divisive. Yeah, well, stay tuned. There's a lot more coming. Um, Hebrews 3 starts out, you know, it says there 4, 6, but, but uh, 3, 16. Now, who was... Who were they who heard and yet were rebellious? Was it not all those who left Egypt under the leadership of Moses? Okay. Your King James Bible says, I'll show you the verse here just so you can remember it. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt. Uh, where are we at here? 3.16. Was it not all those who left Egypt? Not all. Was it not all? <laughs> Against the Jews. Let's check old messy boy here. Uh, Hebrews 3. Try to get down near the end here. Okay, Hebrews, book of Hebrews, chapter 3. Uh, weren't they the very ones Moses led out of Egypt? So again, the message following the Vatican master that they have, or he has, I keep saying they. Well, I should say they because it wasn't just Eugene Peterson that translated it. He did have Satan's help. So I don't want to leave the devil out of it. I don't want to hurt his feelings because we all have to be concerned about people's feelings nowadays. So, you know, it is they that translated the message. But again, they follow their Vatican masters. Try again. Here we go. Hebrews 3.16 in your common English Bible. If you're a Jesuit Satanist, I'm sure this is the one you like. Uh, let's see here. Who was it who rebelled when they heard his voice? Wasn't it all of those who were brought out of Egypt by Moses? All of those. Wasn't it all of those? Not according to the King James Bible. Not all. NIV. Nimrod's idolatrous vampires. 3.16. Hebrews 3.16. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those med Moses, excuse me, Moses led out of Egypt? So again, the King James Bible says not all. Were they not all those? So far they're batting a hundred percent here against the Jews. Let's check finally here with the uh, English Standard Version. 
got to come up with a new, new name for that. You know, uh, maybe the, um, uh, I'll think of one. You can post yours down in the comments there. Um, the Eucharistic slaves, uh, slavery vampires or something like that. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, 316, here, here, Hebrews 316 in the ESV. Um, Hebrews 316, oh, that's Ephesians. Thought I had it there. See, yeah, it's just like, man, you, you work with these things for a while, you start, your brain just starts to, gets confusing. Spirits behind these things. Hebrews 3, 16, For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? So, again, all of the new versions that I've been showing you in this study, every single one of these things right here, including the ones promoted by all the conservative Christians out there, you know, they all are against the Jews. Why? Because they come from the Vatican. Right there. Whoop. They fell down. Imagine that. All of them are Vatican Bibles. Right there. That's the group. The King James Bible does not come from the Vatican. The Vatican has never once promoted this book. And of course, some devil worshippers out there are going to say, well, you know, but Erasmus was a Catholic. Okay, Erasmus had nothing to do with this book. He died almost 100 years before this book came out. And the Texas Receptus that he had part in, that he was made some of the early editions of it, uh, again, he wasn't writing it out of thin air. Okay, he was compiling manuscripts and putting them into a Greek text. Again, when you hear Greek manuscripts, it's not that they're Bibles, you know, books and books and books. These are all Greek manuscripts that they found in the past. No, they're pages, sometimes a portion of a page. And so when you make that into a Greek text, you take a page here and you page there and a page there and you say, well, okay, these all line up. Okay, well, I'll, I'll write my verses this way. And then you look at other ancient manuscripts. You compile a Greek text based on the manuscript support that you have. And the vast majority of manuscripts, as I said, goes with the Texas Receptus. And they say, but Erasmus was involved with the early editions of the Texas Receptus. Okay, show me one Roman Catholic Bible, one Vatican version that comes from this text. Show me one. There aren't any. You know why? Because the Vatican has always rejected the received text. That's why. And they especially reject this book right here, the King James Version. That's why the Jesuits, or the little army of the Vatican, they will try to demonize anybody that holds only to the King James Bible. And they will bring out their lies through the rabbis and tell people that the New Testament is against the Jews. This New Testament is not against the Jews. That's why it's called the King James Version. It's very easy to remember. You know, back in the Old Testament, it says, where the word of a king is, there is power. There's only one King Bible. A King James. You could also say Jacob or Israel. How about that? Yeah. This one's for the Jewish people. This one says that God has plans for them, that God has not replaced the Jews. You can't get that from a King James Bible. These over here, you can. These ones over here have had the text changed, many times not even lining up with their own Greek manuscript support. They changed the text specifically to go against the Jews these are not God's Bibles. Let me show you one other thing here really quickly. I didn't cover this one. This one they have, most of them get it right. They, they mess up the wording of it and everything. But let me just show you this. Romans chapter 3 in the King James Bible. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. These are the oracles of God. Here you have it in the original languages. Okay. There you have it. 
if you have a Bible that's based upon this over here that lines up with these readings here and matches many of the readings in this King James Bible. Okay, and this is the best translation that's ever been made. This is God's Word for the English-speaking people. If you have a Bible that's over on this side, you have God's Word. If your Bible comes from this over here, you don't have God's Word. And if you hear a preacher that sticks to this book and believes this book and doesn't correct this book, you have a good man. You got one over here, James White, or these other types, you have a guy that's serving the Vatican. And James White, don't say, well, he probably doesn't understand. James White understands the issue. And James White, there are guys, uh, Brother Will Kinney. Brother Will Kinney has, has exposed James White for years and years and years. And his stuff on the Bible version issue is excellent. Brother Will Kinney. You know, and James White continues to use this. Why? And you see the real debate here is over... What is God's Word today? Now, if you're a King James Bible believer, God's Word is right here in front of you. You can read it. You can hold it. You can study it. If you're of this philosophy over here, God's Word is lost someplace in the manuscripts. You have to continually revise your Greek text. You have to continually come out and put questions and doubts into people's minds. One minute it's the New American Standard Version. Oh, now next it's the... English Standard Version. Now it's the New King James. Now it's the NIV. Now it's the... You're just continually jumping from one to another. There's no firm foundation. Stay away from this stuff over here and anybody that holds to this pile of Vatican versions over here, run away from them. Okay? You say, well, should you be so dogmatic? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Any preacher... Any preacher, any preacher that uses a Vatican version, scrap him. Don't listen to him for five minutes. Don't even listen to him. Don't waste your time with him. You need to listen to preachers. If you're English speaking or if you can understand the English language, make sure that they're quoting a King James Bible. Preachers, I'm talking. I realize that there are Christians that over on this side in this camp and they don't understand the issue yet, the Holy Spirit will eventually lead them here to His Word. Okay? I understand that. But when we're talking about preachers, guys that are supposed to be teaching and, and edifying and things like that, if they don't use this book, scrap them. They're working for the Vatican. So that is going to be it for this video. We thank you very much for watching. And I'm going to be exposing more of this satanic system over here, this Vatican system. I'm going to be showing you the religion that they're going to be coming out with because they have been forming and crafting this religion. The Protestant Reformation, as we've been saying, my wife has been saying, and I, and I have been saying this in different videos, two of us have been saying it to different people and things. The Protestant Reformation, more and more, when you look at the thing, you realize it was a scam. The whole thing was a scam. They could see that the people of Europe, especially Germany, England, France, you know, places like that, they could see that people, the Bible-believing groups that were there, that were behind the scenes, that had been there since the first century, by the way, not the Protestants. I'm talking about Bible believers. They called them Anabaptists a lot of times. Not to be confused with modern-day Baptists, by the way, either. But these early Christian groups that were there, they were getting the word out to people. Especially when the Gutenberg Press was invented and they started to actually be able to print Bibles. Because before then you had the Lollard Preacher, boy, preacher Boys under John Wycliffe that were handwriting copies of the New Testament in English. And they were giving those out to people and stuff. Oh, that's dangerous. The Catholic Church does not want you to have an authority. They don't want that. They want this pile of junk over here. And so the Protestant Reformation, I believe, was created specifically as a steam valve. You see, when you have steam build up, if you don't release that steam some way, it will blow up. You know, there's many pictures. You can look it up online. Go to Google Images or something. Look up uh, steam explosion or something like that. You'll see old pictures of old steam engines, uh, donkey engines, like a big winch on top of a mountain they'd use for logging or, or uh, steam engines, uh, like trains, locomotives. 
and the boilers will get so hot if the steam valve does not release some of that steam it will literally just go boom and blow up it'll blow up half inch steel you know it'll just blow it up just poof, you know major explosion well catholicism was having problems way back there in the you know 1500s we'll say the 16th century especially is when things really heated up so they brought out the father of the protestant reformation martin luther martin luther being a catholic priest a very highly educated catholic priest and then he comes out and he reforms i'm going to reform catholicism he wasn't trying to get away from catholicism he's just trying to change it a little bit give it just some nice little tweaks and i'll grant you he made a bible from this side over here but you know why he did because there was pressure coming from bible believing christians they were coming out with their own and passing out copies a lot of the uh bibles that are put out by some like the waldensians and things they had their own translations that predate martin luther's bible you know go way 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 back and they were be becoming more and more powerful so catholicism had to say okay let's let's spin this movement that's starting and we'll spin it and it'll kind of like a boomerang you know it'll kind of go way out this way but then it just kind of spins and comes right back to rome and that's exactly what's happened and i'll grant you yes there were protestants that were murdered by catholicism and they you know there were some protestants that that truly i do believe were just like i'm they're protesting rome they weren't seeking to reform rome all right there were some of that I can't say anybody that ever called themselves a Protestant was lost. I can't say that. I think that there were some that were saved. But you get the big boys, like Luther and like the Church of England when they created that and everything. It's just Catholicism. Is all it is. And all these Catholic little daughters, are, they spun out like the boomerang analogy, and now they're coming right back to Rome again. All right? And the Bible believers are still saying, come out, come out, <laughs> get out. <laughs> Get out of that Vatican. Get out of that system. All right? Becoming very apparent. And that's why we make such a big deal. You need to use the Bible that God will bless. And it's the King James Version for today as a Christian. I could go on and on and on about this thing. But my point is, if you're Jewish especially and you've watched this thing, if you're really looking for answers, you're not going to find the answers over here with the Vatican. These are the ones that kill you. These are the ones that have murdered Jews for centuries. They're the ones that also murder Bible-believing Christians. Ironic how that works, isn't it? You know. And again, this group over here does not believe in the inspiration of Scripture. They believe that the Scriptures were inspired originally and that they were lost. Orthodox Jews and real true Bible-believing Christians, we believe that the Scriptures are inspired. We don't say that they're just the writings of men and whatever else. Now, I realize the Orthodox Jews don't accept the New Testament. I understand that. But the thing is, in terms of our beliefs regarding Scripture, we believe the same way. You just haven't accepted the New Testament yet, but you will in the time of Jacob's trouble if you go into that time. So please, 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 if you're Jewish, stay away from this Vatican side over here. Anybody that preaches this, if you're a saved Jew, anybody that preaches the Vatican side and knows about the Bible version issue, guys like James White, Stay away from them. I showed you the proof. This stuff is from the Vatican. These are Vatican versions. I'll stop ranting and raving now. Please study this subject more in depth. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching.